Once again, it's been a while since I've last posted a video, for various reasons. But while cleaning up around my place, I rediscovered this. It's a old stock Ecker radio kit. I hesitate to call it new old stock because it's pretty beat up, but it has never been opened. The box is both water damaged and crushed, so hopefully the kit inside isn't too badly damaged. We shall see. Ecker Radio is a small kit making company in Pasadena, California. There isn't much information out there on their kits and they very rarely come up for sale. This is probably one of the last unopened ones left. But since it's not really in mint condition in any way, I don't feel like it's too much of a tragedy to open this thing and take a look at it. Hopefully you the viewers agree. I'm not even sure what kit is in here specifically. You can see it says OSC RADI there. This may not even be a complete radio kit. It may just be an accessory. We shall see. Well, here goes. There's a staple underneath there. There we go. And another one over here. Quite rusted. There don't seem to be too many parts in here. So unfortunately this may just be an accessory. This sure looks like it's an oscillator. And this is a sub-miniature tube here. There's a fair bit of corrosion, unfortunately. And this no longer turns. Perhaps I should have left this thing sealed in its box, because I don't think it'll be usable, but what's done is done. I'm not going to read this whole thing to you. You can just pause and read it if you want. But at the bottom here it says, Since all the parts were designed and made by hand, it would be impossible for the layman to make such a set. Therefore, there will be no kits or plans for this set. So basically, Mr. Ecker here is just announcing that he made the world's smallest radio and I guess wants you to uh, appreciate his achievement. Not sure what that says there. Read, maybe? Hopefully this is easy enough to read for you guys. All of these kits are extremely rare. Interesting that this radio here is a hybrid. It uses a tube and a transistor. Twenty dollars was a fair chunk of change back then. That's about two hundred dollars in today's money. I've never seen that kit before. If you don't read and follow instructions and follow them as shown, don't buy a kit as you will waste your money and ruin my good reputation of my Ecker radio sets and kits that I have built up in the last six years. Thank you, Mr. Glenn K. He uses punctuation in such an odd way. Oh man, this is pretty disintegrated. It's never been opened before and it's just falling apart here. Let's see if I can get it open to read without just destroying it entirely. So these are the instructions for the kit that I just opened. So it's a pocket FM set and tuner. I wonder how well this thing could possibly work. It just has a single tube, which is really not much for tuning the FM band. I don't think you could have found a more compact FM radio in 1951 though. So if this thing really worked at all, that would be pretty impressive. I'll have to see what I can do to stabilize these instructions so they can actually be read. There's nothing on the back of them. There's one more paper item here, besides the one that's stuck to the bottom of the tuner. 
I'll have to see if I can get that off. So here's some plans for building an amplifier. See it uses the popular 722 transistor from Raytheon. That was basically a cheap hobbyist transistor. Although they are not cheap at all now. They cost quite a bit more than other transistors from the era. Kind of a funny uh, reversal of things. The CK722 was basically assorted fallout transistors from Raytheon's production of other products. And they were about as cheap as transistors could be back then. That's kind of a weird rule on their part there that you have to send them back to the part for them to replace it. Alright, let's take a look at the tuner here. Construction of this thing looks fairly crude to be honest. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to remove that. Let's see if I can get this part of it out at least. So I don't think I'll be able to replace these instructions if they get destroyed, so... I'm trying to take as much care as I can here. There we go. I'll have to see how I preserve these. This tube has been tested in an FM circuit before being packed. Care should be taken while soldering this tube in the set. A socket is recommended. It is, in fact, in a socket already. When using this pocket FM set in a car, it is connected to the car radio as a phonograph is connected. Have a radio man do this. A simple phono jack is fine for this. The shield or ground from the connecting cable is connected to the B+, and the insulated wire goes to the other phone clip on your set. I'll probably preserve this with packing tape or something. Unfortunately, this mechanism here is seized completely. I'll have to see if I can free it up with some uh, oil. It's almost like the plates are glued together, actually. You can see they're stuck there. I'll have to see if I can unstick them. The tube most likely still works. And it's quite possible the whole thing would work. Well, after this thing is resoldered here. Looks like that connection broke loose, but... We'll see. I might try to power this up at some point. If I do, I'll uh, do an update if things work well. The only other part in there was this little switch here. Or rather, big switch. 